Alright everyone, we start off today with a little bit of humor. There is a link in the description, it's to a video clip so it's not archived of course, uh, to David Hogg actually. I would like to thank David Hogg personally. You gave me one hell of a laugh uh, yesterday. Uh, thank you, I needed that. By the way, uh, if you look at his recent uh, upload, why is it that so many people, like Zoomers in their early 20s, usually the leftoid ones, why is it that they already look like they're pushing 40? Like with receding hairlines and wrinkles and shit like that. Like, I've got less wrinkles than David Hogg. He's 22, I'm fucking 35. Is it protein deficiency or something? Is it too much soy intake? I don't know. I guess the outside is just trying to match the inside, and it's intellectually destitute. But this is, this is your task for the day. Um, so sit down, enjoy your cuppa, or, you know, it's the middle of the night for some of you, but uh, so enjoy your evening tea or whatever the fuck you need to do. Smoke your meth, I suppose. Um, I want you to watch this without cringing. Uh, you'll fail, by the way. So pause my video right now and just watch this. It's a minute long. It's, it's basically the anti-gun version of a dare ad. And it's so goddamn god-awful. It's so terribly cringe that I was like, oh my god, I couldn't believe it was real at first. It's so hyperbolic. And it reminded me of an anti-drug, like a Just Say No ad. I think it was around the early 2000s or the late 90s. You remember the one where there's the chick in the kitchen? She's like, this is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs, which is an old, that's an old uh, methodology of, of anti-drug. Uh, and, and she's frying the egg. Then she says, and this is your brain on math, and then she's like smashing the refrigerator, she's smashing all the dishes and stuff, just going crazy and ruining the entire kitchen. And of course, the insinuation is, of course, drugs are going to completely fuck up your kitchen, I suppose, which they could. You know, you get strung out on uh, several different uh, hard substances. Yeah, you, you might wake up and realize that you wrecked everything around you. This somehow goes further into hyperbole land. Uh, I guess the idea is that if you don't store your guns in such a way that you cannot utilize them at, at a moment's notice, that somehow that makes you and your family safer. It talks about, well, my son killed himself, and there's his daughter, and she accidentally killed a dude, and it's all because I didn't have a gun safe and a gun lock, and it t doesn't take me five minutes to get to my firearm if someone breaks down my door. The better, you know, thing to do, of course, is the gun that you would use for home defense you have right by your bedside, and it's safely stored if uh, otherwise, you know, you're not asleep in your bed, you're wearing it on you. So it's, it's your everyday carry weapon, and you keep it with you, and so there's no real risk of your kid getting a hold of it or something. Yes, yeah, so, uh, like in the future, I have a daughter. If she's around in an area where I have firearms, they will be securely stored. But I'm also going to have to have one firearm on me just in case a bear wanders out of the woods and starts attacking the cats. Just in case someone bashes down the door uh, trying to, you know, rape me with a butcher's knife or something like that. Of course, I'm, I'm going to have a firearm on me. It's securely stored because it's on my person at all times, effectively. Uh, you can even take it to the bathroom. You can talk to your gun. I'm sure David Hogg thinks that gun owners uh, act in that way. They sit around with all their guns arranged around them in a circle and they mumble and whisper to them and tell them sweet nothings and all their weird fantasies and beliefs or whatever. But this is so hyperbolic this particular clip. I mean, it's, it's the ultimate cringe. I'm still chuckling thinking about it. This is like, they looked at anti-drug ads and, and how well they performed. Oh my god, those, those uh, faces of meth ads, they really did the job on the public, so we're going to copy them. It's almost like you, you saw a plane crash. You saw a Cessna go down in a cornfield while you were driving by, which I literally did once, but that's a different story. Uh, and they said, wow, I, I can do better than that. So they, they got a Learjet, and they packed it full of crates full of live animals, like pigs and chimpanzees and chickens and everything else, and they fucking live-streamed it as they immolated the plane and brought it down on an apartment building or something like that. Like, ta-da! <laughs> I did it! I built the ultimate cringe. Seriously, look at this ad and tell me that this is not several things that are common to propaganda. First, it literally is think of the children. That's not an insinuation. It's quite explicit here. Think of the children. Your children will die if you have guns in the home and you don't make them completely useless for any topical self-defensive purpose. 
Yes, so that when the burglar breaks in, they can they can kill your kids instead. That makes a whole lot of sense. When Manny the murderer or, you know, Richard the rapist decide to bash down your door with duct tape and an erection, and it ta you'll have to tell him, wait, guy, hold on. I'm armed, so I'm, I'm going to shoot you now. Uh, give me like three or four minutes because, you know, I've, I've got to remember the combination and, and put my finger on the gun to unlock and stuff. And by the way, the ammo stored separately. That's in the attic, so I have to go and get that too. Uh, could you just wait there instead of raping me? <laughs> this is safe storage laws are a joke. By the way, they're attempting to introduce those in my home state of Vermont to make sure that guns are locked up tight in a safe when not in use. Yeah, so in other words, they're fundamentally fucking useless. Uh, they, they're nothing more than on display. Well, that's wonderful. You know, you have your guns safely stored in the, in the clean room or whatever. That's perfectly fine. You need to have at least one firearm capable of being operative at a moment's notice, especially when you live in the middle of nowhere. Like Vermont, half the people in the state live on the edge of the North Woods. There's the possibility of a rabbit animal. There's the possibility that a bear just got stuck in your garage and is attempting to fuck your dog. There's, the ch there's a chance that a New Yorker is in the neighborhood and decides to target your home for the next drug invasion burglary. Uh, it's happening more and more often. As crime rises, more and more people don't want more gun control, by the way. Uh, liberals have not yet figured this out. Anti-gun leftists like David Hogg haven't yet figured this out. When you immediately use, when you coffin ride and you immediately use a school shooting or whatever, as a justification for more gun control. You're ignoring the fact that a significant majority of Americans interpret it completely the other way and say, maybe it's time to get a gun because things are becoming violent. They trust themselves. By the way, I trust 99.9% .9 of other people with firearms. The handful of the rest of them are gang members, who should be in jail generally anyway, cartel members, and lunatics, people who the founders wouldn't have afforded a gun because they would have been locked away. Criminal lunatics weren't allowed to roam the streets. Maybe we should bring back the asylum system. I think that half of these crimes would disappear. And yeah, I think that most of those low IQ gangbangers should be in an asylum too. Clearly they are low functioning individuals on the intellectual basis. We're just going to come out and say it because it's true. Well, the truth is not popular to leftoids these days. Oh yeah, your cringe test of the day. Can you make it one minute through David Hogg's cringe video again? It is the anti-gun counterpart to every D.A.R.E. video that you saw in yesteryear. These days, I guess they don't really do that anymore. They want kids to use drugs. They also want them to uh, look up hardcore pornography. These used to be considered societal issues. Now it's, now it's the inverse. Now it's the evil old people trying to keep them away from these things for some reason. You don't want your kid to go and see twerking at 10 years old? What are you, some kind of far-right monster? They won't grow up normal and be able to function in society if they're not sexualized from infancy. Uh, <laughs> David Hogg, once again, I'm sure would be on the forefront of that particular venture as well. Although, in his case, he already looks like an old person. I don't know what the fuck is happening. And he's not the only one. Look at Dash Dabrowski. That's about all. Peace out.